This is just a little quickie because I found an article that kind of made me mad. And then I settled down and I was like, you know, this is probably a good time to actually have a talk about these sorts of pieces of journalism. Um, it's an article by um, on Polygon by uh, Jeter Jackson. I hope I haven't completely butchered that, but whatever. It lists this as an actual review of the video game Baldur's Gate 3. Now, I have maybe under 20 hours in the game. I've only had it for like three and a half days so far, so... Not good enough. I haven't really put in massive hours, but this isn't about me inherently defending the game because, you know, I'm not putting my ass on the line for a game that I haven't even fucking finished yet. But I just thought that it was a a perfect example of where game journalism is right now. Now the article or review is titled Baldur's Gate 3 is a masterpiece built on a bad tabletop game. Now right off the bat that is fucking clickbait. Yeah. Because yeah. that that isn't even what they have to say. The the article is so much more nuanced. And it actually makes me angry that they say that because at no point do they actually say that D&D is bad within there. It's almost to the contrary. Now, yeah, I put the it article... It makes you just want to click it immediately. That you're like, like what? Yeah. What did yeah, yeah. they fucking say? What did they Rage say bait. about my D&D? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in saying that, like, I still think that's disingenuous to do. If you actually have something worth saying... You shouldn't need to bullshit your title to get rage clicks. The first point is, D&D is a tedious, unfun system to base a game on. I think this, this is really a matter of perspective, but if you take it back, back in the day, like thinking original Baldur's Gate games, there was Planescape Torment, Icewind Dale, um, there's the Neverwinter Nights series, they're all directly based on D&D. But then there's stuff like the original Fallout, Wasteland, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, all based on D&D rule set. And to varying degrees, you can really see the prevalence in that. And yeah. Or at least what, a D20 sort of mindset. Yeah, yeah, or dice rolls and RNG. Um, yeah. And I can sort of see where they're coming from, from a perspective of... You want, you know, constant action and you're, you know, running around and shooting shit and whatnot. That's fine, but that's not what this game is and it never has yeah. been. And but then the sort article sort of site backsteps from that and then goes back to saying like, oh, the most interesting parts about it are the interactions <laughs> with each other and your party members. And you're like, which one do you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We will get to that when we get to that. Right, point. all right, cool. So yeah. that is one of the points. Now, um... Point two that they went on with was Baldur's Gate 1998 came out before the like D and D hype because as we know it now, Stranger Things all that shit, fucking D and D is through the roof. But now there's a heap of hype. Does that is like is that why the third entry is good? No, and I, I I disagree. I think it's because the last two have been good and people have been waiting a dang long time for the next one and this is it. That that's like, it, that's exactly it. Like, it doesn't say on it Dungeons and Dragons Baldur's Gate three. It says Baldur's Gate three. So yeah. you know what I mean. Like, so you may have watched the movie. Doesn't mean you actually will know what this is unless you're following this sort of mindset, or you're a, a video gamer of some kind, or you're a PC. Like, you you may not stumble upon this if you've just watched a film. Is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Absolutely, like, absolutely. And there's no. Um, alluding to D and D in, or like, there's no alluding to Baldur's Gate or anything in any popular media. So yeah. I don't think that there's anything that kind of makes that the case. And Baldur's Gate in its prime. So like, I got back into PC gaming real hard back in the like uh, early two or mid two thousands. And people were raving about Baldur's Gate. And at the time, I never had the money, or when I did, I couldn't find Baldur's Gate. Whatever. I never got to play it in its prime. And 
but people would always regard it as one of the greatest RPGs of all time. I kind yeah. of got into it a bit late and it was a blurry hot mess, so my experience is a bit jaded on that. But there has always been a lot of love for those games, Icewind Dale and Planescape Torment, which are all made by some of the best known devs around, because a good dev can turn a D&D &D system into something amazing. There's plenty Absolutely. of examples of shit D&D &D games. I, I'm sure you've probably played your fair share. I've tried, yeah. I yeah. usually give up pretty quickly. Um, and then there are the, the ones that I'm sure are probably um, very, very true to home and stuff for Pathfinder and things as well. Um, mm -hmm. Pillars of Eternity being one of those. And, you know, great game, but didn't have the time to really try and pick it up because it just seemed a little bit more complicated than I had time for it at that point. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not saying it's a good game. I just didn't have the chance to really dive into it. But I, there's a ton I, of them out there, good and bad. You know, Two Worlds came around and tried their thing. Um, not strategy-based, but similar concept behind everything they did. I don't know. You can base almost every RPG around some similarity to D&D some way, yeah. shape, or form because you're talking about story equals, you know... The, the whole prevalence of it, I don't know. Yeah, like, you're role-playing, and yeah. then especially in environments where you have, like, percentage chances and that, do you think, like, mm. when you're playing Fallout New Vegas and you bring up that and you start aiming at someone's face and it says you've got a 16% chance of shooting, is that any different than rolling, you know, a D100 and you've got to get above... Uh, sorry, below... Like, or in that 16th percentile, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's all not... stats, and it's all and it's all coming off of your character and their skills and abilities as well. You know, buffs and debuffs on that as well. So it's exactly the same. We're talking the yeah. same sort of maths behind it. Exactly. The same idea. Yeah. And yeah, sure, they're presented a little differently depending on what the game is. But that core element is always still sort of there. And that's where it sort of comes to the next point, which is probably a good roll-off point, because you nearly touched on it. You nearly gave it away. Um, <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah, but combat is bad because it's too true to D&D, &D, and D&D &D combat is a limitation of the platform. Now, they actually said that the combat was a limitation. Now, in some senses, I might agree. Like, when we're all we sitting around a like, table and, and you're like, oh, it's your turn for initiative, Jace. I'm not thinking, oh, okay, boring, let's just throw sword, roll dice. Like, that can be how it is. And if that is the case, that's the player making it boring. And Correct. that's that's when a game can also do that. If you've ever yep. played games where they give you that sort of turn-based combat but your choice is basically attack flee or defend shit like that that's fucking boring yes holy that shit that is monotonous. boring however this is not one of those games at all i heard no. a story today from from my brother zach and he was you know after reading this article as well just told me like how bullshit you know that that <laughs> concept is basically because he with uh, with a mate of his was in combat the other night well actually prior to combat they ran into some drunk kob kobolds which were uh, diving into wine barrels they managed to because one had passed out inside of one pick up the wine barrel carry it to another area and throw it into an area where they ended up taking the fight instead of them so <laughs> the drunk kobolds crashed out of this wine cask and ended up getting in a drunken fight with the other guys and they were a huge distraction they just walked straight past the whole thing like so yeah you know it can be very linear if all you're doing is pressing you know key one to do firebolt every round until you burn your spell slots and then go okay now i'm going to whack him with stick but there are like many different ways of doing it are there are there infinite ways of doing it no because it's a fucking video game like it's pretty obvious you're not going to be able to do absolutely everything your mind puts it puts itself to because it is a video game, you idiot. Like, you can't do everything in the world, obviously, yeah. because it is a system and it has its rules set, but, you know, within its scope, I think there's a lot you can do. And I think if you think it's just 
as straightforward as walking up and wacky wacky then maybe get creative because i think that's a you problem not a not this game's problem absolutely and so like a good example would be the gameplay that i just experienced like moments before we did this i had to track down a bunch of people that were um trying to hunt a party member of mine i thought oh yeah i saw a building i'm like all right i'll take the ladder up and go on the high ground i'll see what's what open a door and i see people below talking and i'm like all right this is surely them and i had the opportunity from stealth to shoot a like chandelier and obviously that drops and just fire sprays everywhere killed one of them instantly damaged one of them and then you know um i actually had the option to still talk my way out of it or engage in combat <laughs> so like, like whoops <laughs> i i How'd actually that arrow get there <laughs> i deceived them and i was like oh didn't you see the attacker fled and they're like okay i'm watching you I was like, <laughs> <laughs> nice but like that's fucking awesome but there still is limitations because like yeah you know they clearly had to put that chandelier there with the ability for that chandelier to fall and all that sort mm. of shit but that's it and it's a game you have limitations with again within a game infinite game. freedom yeah. ends up with shit like no man's sky which when it launched big mess because it could procedurally generate anything you threw at it, it still had its rules and stuff and the combination of the two led to really big problems and the more mm -hmm. focused they made the game the better it became and so it's a balancing act with games because you can't Correct. just imagine a thing and then make it happen i mean the same can be said about your tabletop as well it's not anything goes as i've said before rolling a, a nat 20 to steal the king's crown just means that you don't die from trying to steal the king's crown it doesn't mean that you get to wear the king's crown and take the kingdom over there are still limits as to a regular game there might be less limits for if you have a very lenient dm or there might be more strict limits if you have one that is very to the rules and has a, has a mindset that he you know he slash she wants to sort of push like that's up to the dm so saying that even DD &D is limitless is just ridiculous because it's absolutely not yeah. Uh, we have our sets of rules to follow as far as you know your, your actual raw rules go and then anything on top of that the dm throws in there plus story it doesn't make sense even the party members themselves probably aren't going to want to go for it so yeah there's freedom probably you know exponentially more freedom at a tabletop level but not entirely free yeah so you absolutely know, yeah. And that actually leads on to point four. You, you're doing great with the segues, mate. Wow. Love it. It's like we prepared this. <laughs> we did we not. We prepare shit. <laughs> nah, fuck that. Nah. Point four was that the AI DM is not lenient on players. The example used was that a goblin ambush kicked a player off a... Like, so goblin just popped out of a bush, just yeeted a player off a cliff or yeah. into a chasm. And a chasm means the corpse is gone. They're not coming back and uh, so yeah it's basically this then leads to either reloading a save or living with those consequences you know yeah. what i have to say about that that's fucking reality like in in D, &D if you do something stupid and it gets your player killed too bad you don't get to reload a save at a table you can't just be like oh mr dm please yeah, please retcon everything we just did. I regret my decisions to... Yeah. And my, my roles were not great. Yeah, no. Um, but also, I don't know if he if he changed the he slash she. I don't know if it, what gender they are. Um, yeah. Shouldn't assume. But I don't know if they changed the setting inside of, um, of their game or not. But it should be holding a few blows for them anyway. The, yeah, um, so that setting, I've had to turn off a few times because every time your game crashes, yeah. it turns it back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it kind of dice is a setting times. that is already turned on on this game to sort of make it so that you're not getting kicked while you're down the whole time. And I get that. Sometimes that can be very frustrating in battle and all the rest of it. But if you're sort of true to D&D like I am, I would rather just see where it plays out. And if it happens that I completely wipe, I'll just start again to be honest that's where i'm at with this so 
but you know how many times you do that before you get the shits and turn it on go for it who cares how you play it but you know it's there to help so if they've turned that off maybe turn it back on and make your life a little bit easier sometimes because it sounds like you're struggling on the game level like you are yeah. struggling with combat i i completely agree and i think the other part to that as well is that reloading a save is going lenient that is way more lenient than you will ever get at a table 100 percent. because you yep. can backtrack on your rolls but the other thing is as well is that's supposed to be part of the experience is you're supposed to fear death you, this is your role play you want to fear the consequences of things i've yep. had roles where i'm trying to deceive people or convince them of something and i've shit the bed on it and there's still things like uh if you have inspiration you can roll again and stuff like that and that's pretty fucking lenient as well and even then if i keep shitting the bed i'm like well it's meant to be and it wasn't meant. <laughs> obviously if you fail that many times it wasn't meant to happen right like yeah and Sometimes I, I I save and I go back just to see what that other thing might have been out of just pure curiosity. I'm like, I need to understand like what was the other thing or other things that could have happened out of this scenario, and I might check them out. But generally, I go back to the first thing that I did and and just accept that as fate. Yeah. And just move on. You know? Yeah. Well, that's multiple playthroughs, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. You know. Yeah, um, true. See, I don't, I don't know if I have the luxury of multiple playthroughs. So sometimes I do the old save and just go back, just out of curiosity to see what's going on back there. But that's you know a perfect example of how two different people can play this game and who gives a shit how they do it. And the, you know there are consequences, and so be it. Who cares? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so moving on to the next one, it's sort of a split point. So half of the point was saying that you know. The game's visibility and uh, positioning is always really crucial, but it's not always optimal. Now that's just a problem that you have with isometric RPGs. Camera's never going to be perfect. Sure, you can cut in bits of walls and remove them and stuff like that. Helps a little bit, especially going up levels, like when I was fighting on rafters. It was really fucking awkward to see if I was like... Like, if I was trying to shoot someone that was already up there, but I was down, it's a fucking nightmare to see that. That's just a problem with the format of visuals, and in all honesty, that could totally be fixed in-game. Like, it, it's something that, you know, maybe Baldur's Gate 4 might address better. Something like that. That's completely valid as far as I'm concerned. The other part of that, though, was that the person were also lumped in managing spell slots being contrary oh, yeah. <laughs> to fun based on conversing with others so they say that managing spells and stuff that side of D&D &D, is not fun in a video game even mm. though spell slots is basically mana like yes that, which you know depicts any sort of magic using game whatsoever yeah uh, I, I find it fun. I find that part of the strategy of combat is, do I burn everything out in this one fight? What's around the corner right now? I don't know. Do I risk it all and just hold on to my spells just in case there's something worse? Or do I pull them out because I'm probably going to die if I don't? What's, you know, risk and reward? Like, what's going to happen next? Do I have a chance for a long rest now in between here and the next, the next thing? Like, I like that. I think that's part I, of the strategy of D&D at, at a tabletop level, and it's exactly translated in this game as well. So there's no reason why that, that is a uh, con at all. That is an absolute pro as far as I'm concerned, and completely that's agree. just part of playing this game if you want to be a spellcaster. You have spell slots, manage them. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's sort of like, you know, having things like rage as well, because if I remember correctly, yeah. rage can only be used twice before a long rest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and you and you can suffer points of exhaustion if and all those sort of things, you know. Yeah. You need to get hit within the round, all of that. Like, yeah. it keeps it interesting. That's the whole point, is to make Absolutely. sure you're engaged. <laughs> and, like, th that's one of the things is, like, so I've got one character in my party that has... Um, I think it's called like Ray of Fire or 
ray of light or something like that. It's basically like three beams of fire that's like 3d8 of damage or something like that. So if I'm at a range that I can hit, like there's an 80% chance of hitting, I am going to fuck up most things. But it's a level 2 spell slot, so I don't get a whole lot of fucking use out of that. So if I go into a fight... I'm not going to use that on Joe Goblin Cock over there. I'm going to use it on the BBEG, you know? Like, yeah. And that's part of it, is you're like, okay, well, can't use my fucking amazing spell, but this one does between 2 and 8 damage, so fuck it, let's give that a go. See how we go with that. That's fun. Yeah. That's yes. strategy. It's a whole type yes. of gameplay. 100%. It's economizing your your uh, your magic to what your your scenario entails. Like it's just yeah. I don't know. There's there's no there's nothing wrong or concerning about this at all. It's just part of D&D and Baldur's Gate and any yeah, any RPG. RPG. Yeah. I just don't get it. Like there's no argument here to say that that's a shit mechanic unless you just don't like playing this type of game, which I feel like is actually just the case. Yeah. So I definitely feel like that's the case. It seems very much like the writer doesn't enjoy strategy combat. So That's the part I think, yeah, 100%. I think they like sitting around with their buds and playing some D&D. It sounds like they have at least played a little bit of D&D. Yeah, they definitely Very have. casual by the sounds of it and not very intense and probably not long-lived by the feel of it. I don't think they've jumped into long campaigns by any means. I think they've just had a few... I don't know, overnight sessions and one shots and stuff and just really casual sort of gaming and that's great um but yeah i don't think they're used to the whole strategizing and combat thing they're probably just fighting a big bad in one room with no you know mechanics and no environmental sort of impacts or anything like that it really feels like it's very it's a very linear one shot sort of a person we're that, talking to here. that or they've been in very uh story focused campaigns yeah where, possibly, where, where yeah. it's all about you know um you know building relationships and stuff and, and yeah yeah yeah, and yeah that's perfectly okay and this sort of rolls into the next point which is that um the fun the writer gets from D, D is all about using their imagination and role playing with a dungeon master now i have nothing against that that's absolutely fantastic i love using my imagination and i love the whole concept of role play um and there there is a level of role play that you can get from the game as well like you know you pick your choices your weaponry your attire based on yep. the sort of person that you believe your character to be and i think you know, if you stand strong behind that as well and don't break character in game like really role play that character inside of a video game as well don't meta it because you can easily meta inside of a video game world you'll probably find it a little bit more immersive as well like you'll really start to go oh my my character probably wouldn't do that so i know it's a bad decision yeah but this guy is very abrasive and most likely is going to punch this guy and not try to talk his way out of it even though he's outnumbered five to one so be it maybe it's going to be funny like maybe you wake up in an alley and then you bump into someone who gives you a side quest to go and get your pants back like yeah who knows like you really don't know with this game where it can lead and i've seen this time and time again from examples that people have thrown up on socials already the scenarios you can get in are uh, are amazing and most of them come from fails so yeah yeah and like the other part about imagination it's a visual medium like do you, do you watch a movie and think oh well i could have imagined better than that like <laughs> i get where you're coming from but if imagination is such a key point then you're using the wrong medium you, yeah. you can't say I want imagination and then go into a medium that doesn't allow that. Like, yeah, like yeah, you can do some like filling the blanks with you know plot points and stuff, but it's really about it. Now, the next part from here is combat being unforgiving, and that sort of rolls into the whole strategy thing. So the v reviewer said that they would constantly reload saves because of bad dice rolls. Now. If you've ever played stuff like uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, um, XCOM, XCOM is a really good example of this because XCOM is fucking brutal because 
basically if you're like if you lose a player that's it they're fucked go you can like on the next mission you can recruit a new person but they're back at level one or whatever like you've then got to retrain them so you become very attached to your crew and you try to keep those fuckers alive and all the combat is turn-based and strategic and it's all about doing what you can to survive and this is a whole type of game that people love for that very aspect strategic combat yeah, yeah. and i don't i don't know it just sound to me it sounds like this reviewer doesn't enjoy strategy games and that's about it yeah that, that's the core yep. takeaway of this Plain and simple. the next part i think is one of the silliest things i heard in the entire article the dice roll sound or knowing that the game is calculating odds makes it seem less flexible than other games that allow multiple choices and stuff and they gave some examples of games i haven't played so i can't make direct comparisons to what they've stated but in all honesty I love that element like that reminds me of like you know when you're walking around in a dungeon and you say to us roll perception I'm like the fuck is this for <laughs> like it, it builds up a bit of fear and like the same thing happens in Baldur's Gate you're walking around and you just hear the dice roll and you're like oh fuck me what's happening here and then they're like oh I know what that says on that wall and you're like you fucks and just shit like that so I think that's a really cool element and I think it makes it feel like at least to me it does feel more flexible because I know the choices that are happening in the background as I go about things so it's not yeah. like I'm just completely walking down this alleyway just missing everything I know that there was something there that I've now missed 100% and 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 how how scripted do they want it to feel if like you're walking down there and nothing happens every time whereas if your passive perception or your your, your perception check is high enough you're going to see that thing and it interacts in a different way so like you could walk down the same hallway with five different characters and there could be five different scenarios play out to round it out the last point is uh, you have insane amounts of choice but you can't do as much as you could at a table now that kind of seems contrary to earlier points where There's D&D no is the limitation like yeah but then they're yeah, like oh they're but you've got heaps it. of yeah. choice but you can't do as much as which is it like which is the limitation is it D&D or the game because reality is it's both they're both yep. limited within their own scope and that's that like if if all you want is D&D go play D&D I'm all for that fucking play as much tabletop as you fucking can sign me up mm -hmm. but if you want to play a game or you've you're on your fucking lunch break and you work from home like me slap on some boulders gate because i can't just be like hey justin man can you run a 30 minute one shot while i eat my noodles <laughs> it would be good though <laughs> yeah fuck yeah i'll uh, i'll hit you up tomorrow yeah i don't know it just sounds like they really wanted to win a whole lot in this article as well like they were just upset that they weren't winning enough so um you were way more diplomatic than i was after i read it i was like this is bullshit man like this is just such a piss take and just <laughs> such an opinionistic uh pile of garbage to be honest i just i'm over it i'm over reading things like this i'm over um people having to uh having to comment on things like this just because yeah. of how frustrating they are and i don't know yeah. it's just so I, and I by the end of it they almost entirely backtrack yet again and this happens all the time with articles like this they come out swinging but then they're like oh but i'm gonna sink hundreds of hours in because i like it yeah like, okay so the article ends with like something like i'm gonna be playing this for hundreds of hours but just so yeah. you know sucks it's fucking sucks man yeah 100 percent. so you're gonna Make put hundreds of hours into something that you don't like like you might as well go to work man because like that makes no sense what are you doing like i just don't yeah. understand what they like, want from this if that was an opinion piece i wouldn't yeah. have minded so much but the yeah. fact that it actually states in like the url and stuff that it's a review yeah makes me a lot more critical of it and it just seems really silly because 
I think we've discussed it previously, but there have been instances of people reviewing a game that's from a genre that they don't typically like. If so, like you shouldn't be having someone that has an inherent bias, but like I wouldn't get you know someone that hates challenging games to be like, oh yeah, can you just uh, review Sekiro or something like? That's no. You get someone yeah. that's going to at least be in the ballpark. They like high fantasy. They enjoy strategy. That's, that's right. the person you have. Then they can make a you know unbiased choice. Yeah. But yep. as but a review, I think this it's... up with like as far as reviews go, a lot of people are saying ten out of ten and all the rest of this BS. Like for a game that has stayed in beta for as long as it has, and layering games, I love you guys. Don't take this the wrong way, but. Like, it's not finished, it's not polished as, as much as we'd hope, and I don't think it's a 10 out of 10 game. Is it is it up there as game of the year? Absolutely. Is it, like, a 9 plus? Absolutely. But no, it's not a 10, but we're nitpicking when it comes down to those bits. Like, you can, you can run the same dialogue uh, 15 times over and you'll get a different scenario. One of them may not fit properly, like one of your players, like one of your, your characters in your team might say something and it will be like, oh, you did this, but they were right there when it happened, so it kind of doesn't yeah. quite fit the, the role play sort of aspect, and that's probably where they, they sometimes miss it. But then if you go back and you have that same conversation, you watch that conversation will be entirely different 15 times over. That's where it gets very complicated and very yeah. complex. So like it, it's early, you know, and we'll probably do a review episode after we've all played it. But like um, fifteen thousand hours later, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's you know, but I, like my thoughts are, it, it's definitely not a perfect game, but it's a fantastic yeah. game. Yeah, and it's not without its flaws. And there were some valid points in the review that uh, Jeta Jackson did, but. Uh, a lot of yeah, it's just bullshit few and far to... between though for me honestly yeah like my my last thing that i wrote down this was straight after reading it so you know i was fiery but i said like if you want to go like win games and just constantly be winning because of the whole you know i'm gonna save and i'm gonna go back and i'm just gonna keep trying to get those nat 20 rolls until i win this combat like if you want to win go back to playing like paw patrol or 50 cc mario Kart because like that's where you're at right now <laughs> for me like Go go do that and leave this for the big boys because like honestly, <sighs> can't be fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you that clearly whole... don't want to strategize. You don't want to play this game for what it is. You can play it in in its own way though. Like you're not even thinking about it in the other ways. Like try and up your charisma as you were saying in the article, and try and talk your way out of these scenarios and don't have to fight them all. I'm sure that there are ways that you could probably almost avoid almost all combat in this game in some way, shape, or form. I, I, I guarantee very you a challenge run will be out it. there next year sometime where someone does the no hit, next no fight. Next week. Freaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week, you know, no hit, no fight, end game shit. Like, you know. So, go. Uh, yeah, that that that's my that's my thing on it. That's my review on a review on some yeah. BS. So, yeah. Yeah. They really should have just said. This game is great, but not for me. Yeah. I have these problems with it. Yeah. But at no point they <laughs> acknowledged that this game isn't their de like they are not the demographic for this game. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's probably it's, it's the a you problem. problem. It's not. It's not a game problem. It's a you problem. So move on. Yeah. Hundred percent. Right? Anyway, yeah. this is our quick recap of uh, recap. So. Yep. Enjoy. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, thanks for the super smooth transition and handover there, guys, because I do actually have quite a few thoughts on this issue. Um, <sighs> so, yeah, um... In conclusion, I completely agree with everything Jay said, I guess. What a bombshell.